we can see the general term in action by using this uh, example here. So remember the general term was just un equals u1 times r to the power of n minus 1 if it's geometric. So here we have, we want to find the 14th term of this series, 12, negative 6, 3, negative 3 over 2, comma, dot, 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 so it keeps going. Well, first I think it's a good idea to check if it's even geometric. I think that's a good thing to check. So if it's geometric, it has to have a common ratio. So let's check. Negative 6 divided by 12. What does that give us? Well, let's see. They both divide by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 12 divided by 6 is 2. And there's a negative. All right, that's what we would think maybe the common ratio is. We'd better check the other ones. 3 divided by negative 6. So the third term divided by the second term. Let's see what that gives us. They both divide by 3. I get a 1 over 2. But a negative on the bottom is the same thing as a negative on the top. So that's the same. Let's try the third one here. It may look more complicated. Maybe you start sort of sweating when you see a fraction here. But let's just see. Negative 3 halves divided by 3. Well, a fraction divided by a regular number, that's the same thing as saying 3 halves, like negative 3 over 2. And this is also on the bottom, so is this. So because of that, I can say 2 times 3. Well, negative 3 divided by 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Negative 3 over 6 is the same thing as this. That's negative 1 half. So I know it is geometric. And in fact, this helps me because I know my common ratio is negative 1 half. And I know u1. The first term is 12. Well, now this is easy. Now I just plug in this equation here. So again, it's always a good idea to sort of show what generic equation you're using. So un equals u1 times r to the power of n minus 1. And I'm going to just plug in that stuff. But I don't want the nth term. I want the 14th term. So u14 is equal to u1. Well, that's 12. Times r, which is negative 1 half. All that is to the power of n minus 1. So 14 minus 1, that's just 13. You might say, oh great, I do 12 times negative 1 half and take that answer to the power of 13, right? Wrong. You first do negative 1 half to the power of 13, and only then do you multiply your answer by 12. Now this could be done by hand, but I, I want to show you how to do this on your calculator. I'm going to show you a good trick, at least if you use a TI-83 or 84 or one of these TI ones. So in this case here, I'm using a TI-84. So I'm going to say my fraction, which is going to be in brackets here, negative 1 over 2. Oops, for some reason it said 3. There we go. I must have pressed the wrong button. So I want negative 1 over 2. I want to take that answer and raise it to the power of 13. I get some negative answer. I multiply that answer by 12. And I get this answer. Now I don't feel like writing all this down, and I suspect this will probably be a fraction, because I can do 1 to the power of 13 and 2 to the power of 13. All that can be by 12. So if you ever want to convert to a fraction, at least on a TI calculator like a TI-84, it's easy to just press math, and then you want to convert to fractions, so it's enter, enter. So what I do is I just remember if I want to convert a decimal to a fraction, if it can be, if it's a rational number, we say, this is the definition of a rational number, a number that can be written as a fraction. So clearly from here it could be converted. So I just remember it's always math, enter, enter. That gives me negative 3 over 2048. So that's my answer. So u14, the 14th term, is negative 3 over 2048. That is my 14th term. So that may have looked really complicated, but that's how we can solve this. Now I'm going to give you one that looks totally unfamiliar. I mean, here we're saying find k. You're like, oh my god, what's that? Given that the following are consecutive terms in a geometric sequence. First of all, it helps to know what consecutive means. That means one after the other. So really, what you're told then is that this k, 3k, and 20 minus k those are terms in a geometric sequence, and they're consecutive, which means they go one after the other. And this is the key. I mean, normally you'd say, oh my god, what do I do? And you might panic, you might throw up, but no, you don't have to do that. You don't even have to cry. Geometric, that means common ratio, like I've been showing you before.
And if that's the case, let's just forget about everything else and let's just try to find the common ratio. Well, that means I take the second term divided by the first term. So 3k divided by k. What's that going to give me? Well, the k's are going to cancel out. k over k is just 1. So it's just 3. Aha! I know that r equals 3. That's nice. I know my common ratio is 3. Well, that's really helpful. But what else is helpful is this. Let's do this now. Let's do the third term divided by the second term to find that common ratio. So 20 minus k divided by 3k. Now, I don't know what that equals, but actually I do. Because I'm told it's geometric, I can say that this divided by this will be the same as this divided by this. And if this divided by this is 3, then this over this is also 3. So that was the key to doing this, is this 3 came here. So this 3 got you that answer. And then basically now I have one equation with one unknown. So I can actually solve for k here. So what I can do then is just work on it. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3k to get this to come up to the top. So I have 20 minus k equals 3k times 3, so that gives me 9k. Right, just because I multiply the top and the bottom by 3k. 3k over 3k would just cancel out. And 3 times 3k is just 9k. Now I want to solve for k. Maybe I want to move this one to the right. So the opposite of minus k is plus k. So I'll add k to both sides. That would get rid of it here. So I just have 20. And 9k plus 1k would be 10k. And then I want k on its own. k is going to be just 20 over 10, which is just 2. So because of that, actually, I'm done. I don't even put a uh, circle around it. I should actually put a big giant square around it. That's my final answer. So k is 2. And maybe I want to check that these really are geometric. Because if I did it right, this should really work. So k is just 2. And then 3k, well, 3 times 2 is 6. And then 20 minus k, well, 20 minus 2, that's 18. Is this really geometric? 2 then 6, then 18? Sure, because if I multiply them each by 3, 2 times 3 gives me 6. 6 times 3 gives me 18. So yes, this is indeed geometric. So that tells me I probably did it right. So you see how we can deal with a really tough looking question by just remembering the definition of geometric. Geometric means common ratio, which means one term divided by the term before it will always be the same. So every, every next term divided by the term before it will always be the same number.